Welcome back. So now let's talk about a different, uh, another alternative uh, to MPV. Now, the pro uh, is, although MPV is great decision rule, there's slight one slight problems. You know, uh, the problem is not really technical problem, but uh, sort of the practical problem. Lots of people don't understand MPV, especially if they don't have finance background. Then you actually have to teach them from the time value money and you know the the cash flow estimation things like that. And we cannot guarantee that your boss will easily understand those parts. And people usually don't want to see the long numbers, dollar amounts, and then um, in the report. So. As an alternative, we actually have very good alternative actually. Uh, it's called internal rate of returns. This is percentage style uh, number. So it's widely used in practice because of that. It's quite intuitively appealing, you know, I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna explain that. It's also based entirely on the estimated cash flow and it is independent of the interest rate because interest rate is only um, is when you calculate IRL, interest rate doesn't matter. When you make a decision now, that's interest rate is matters from that time. So what's the IRL? The definition of IRL is now is IRL is discount rate that makes zero MPV. So as you know, MPV goes to you know present value of you know all cash flows, right? And if you set this zero and find the R, that's the IRL. And after you calculate the IRL, if IRL is greater than the required return, the interest rate now, you accept the project. If it is less than R, you reject. We're gonna look at why. So, computing IRL itself uh, is actually pretty similar uh, way that we did in actual MPV. So let's look at that. You know, so let's clear these and find the MPV. Now again, you basically do the same cash flow register. Press CF. And you all you know you have all cash flows now, right? From CF0 equals to negative 165,000, C01 equals to 63,120, C02 equals to 70,800, C03 equals to 91,080. If you don't have one, then you can do that you know from you know, the same way that we did in the previous clip. And then instead of pressing MPB, now press IRL. Easy, press IRL. And just compute. And you have IRL equals to 16.1322, so 16.13%. Now the decision is, if, if it is greater than R, which is the 12%, then you accept. So this is same decisions that we did in MPB, right? Now, so 16.13% IRL greater than recall return, we accept the project. So this is quite appealing, you know. We can say that you can say that, oh yeah, we need to make 12%. We actually will make 16.13% from this project, so we accept. Now, the reason why we have consistent results from MPV and IRL is this. So this is called MPV for file, the graphical representation uh, about the relation between the discount rate R and MPV. Okay. And if you draw that and it nicely, you know, this type of the download curve. And this point is N IRL. This point is zero MPV, right? So when interest rate is 16.13%, your MPV equals to zero. Okay. Because you your discount rate is twelve percent, you should an MPV positive. So this range, the acceptance range here, is all positive MPV range 
when IRL is greater than R, right? Same thing here, this range, now this is when IRL is less than R. Oh. So, your decision from MPV should be consistent with the decision from IRL. Decision, you know, acceptance region, rejection region exactly overlapping, same. So now let's think about the decision criteria again. So five rules. Again, all cash flow. So it consider all cash flow. It is yes, right? Because we use all cash flow to compute IRL. How about time value of money? The answer is yes again, right? Because uh, we compute basically the, the 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 present value to compare using IRL as a discount rate. How about the risk? Now, how to adjust the risk again? You can change R, right? If R increase, then the acceptance region decrease, right? So, you can increase R if the project is riskier, so the, the answer is yes. Now, last two problem. What about the ranking? Now, some people say, oh, we can rank that because higher IR will be good. In fact, Higher IRL is not always good. There will be the reason I'm going to show that later on. We cannot rank the project using IRL. That's that's why MPV is better than IRL. Now the final one, the values. Does it provide values? No. It does not show any dollar amount, right? You only show the the percentage. So the answer is no. So we only the IRL only satisfy three of them. Which may this IR, like a MPV, which makes MPV better than IRL, you know. So this is still very good primary decision criteria because most of the case, you can actually uh, the decision from IRL should be consistent with MPV. There are some exceptions we can see it later on, but. Because of that, this is good primary decision criteria, but if we have conflict with MPV, then you have to actually uh, accept the uh, um, result from MPV. So the advantage is preferred by executive, preferred by the CEOs, since this is intuitively appealing, again, easy to communicate. You know, the percentage is easy. If IRL is high enough, so if IRL is like 90%, we don't have to think about R because most of the risk, the required return is at ninety percent. Just accept the project, so we can uh, loose, loosen some of uh, you know burden. You get uh, the burden that uh, estimate R. You don't have to do. If IR is too low, it's the same thing, right? We just reject that because we know that there will be certain rate of return that we require. We consider all cash flow again TVM and provide indication of the risk. So this is good measures, but there are certain problems here can produce multiple answers. If you call from called the multiple IRL problem, and we cannot rank it. We cannot rank it. I'm going to show why. And the reinvestment assumption flow. Then we're going to see that too. Okay. So MPV versus IRL, you know, you generally give the same decisions when the cash flow is normal, you know. So we have nicely downward MPV profile curve, right? And this is IRL, so you have basically good, um, the consistent results. Now, but there are certain exceptions. First one is the non-conventional cash flow. The, the non-conventional cash flow is the cash flow that ch change the sign more than once. It means that, so mostly like uh, we saw the cash flow from negative to positive, you know, $165,000 to 63120 just once and keep the positive all the time. But it sometimes change more than once, then you actually uh, cannot use IRL. There's called a mutually exclusive project which is the project that you actually have to compare, the rank. Then we cannot uh, rely the rely on the results from IRL. 
So let's look at the non-conventional cash flow again. The definition of non-conventional cash flow is cash flow change the sign more than once. Most common cases that you have initial cost, so negative cash flow. You, you make money, positive cash flow, and then when you close the project, there's sometimes you have to you lose lose money, negative again. So from negative to positive, positive to negative again twice, right? Then you cannot use IRR. The IRR is not reliable. It actually generates more than one IRR, and both IRRs are not reliable. The typical example is the nuclear power plant. So when you uh, when a company build a nuclear power plant, they basically spend a lot of money when they built it, and then so negative cash flow initially, and generate the positive stream of positive cash flow when the nuclear power plant is running, right? So it sells the electricity, and later on, after 50 years, say they have to shut down, and when they shut down, they need to actually keep paying the maintenance costs without without generating uh, profit. So negative cash flows again then change sign one more time then you cannot use IRL so the mathematical mathematics says that if you change the sign more than once like polynomial of degree n to n which you know you uh, you have more than one solutions you know that's the reason we don't know we don't have to know these rules but at least we have to know that it will generate more than one IRL. So let's look at the example here. So suppose the investment will cost 90,000 initially. So CF0 is 90,000. Okay. And then C01 is 132,000. C02 is 100,000. And C03 is negative 150,000. So this is non-conventional cash flow because the cash flow sign changed one time and twice, right? More than once. If R is 15%, how about IRL? So, when you compute the IRL, again, you have to have the D3 cash flows, uh, right? 90,000 negative, 132,000 C01. And uh, 100,000 C02 and 150,000 negative now again C03 If you compute the IRL then your calculator should show 10.11% If you follow the IR rule it's less than 15 so you have to reject right? And let's compute the MPV too. So if required rate of return is 15, if you compute the MPV, you should have $1,769.54, which is positive actually. From MPV rule, you have to accept, right? There is conflict between two IRL versus MPV. Again, the decision is you should use this MPV decision because MPV prevails, MPV dominant, dominant dominates every, everything else. However, the reason why we have this IRL is because we have non-conventional cash flow, this is not only the IRLs. Let's look at the Empire 4 file. It's not really nicely downward curve now. It's actually this shaped curve and generate two MPVs, I mean two IRLs, you know. And the calculate only show the first one, which is not a good one. Second one, also not good because this IRL, still there's uh, reasons that it's not consistent with the MPV decision. So, just follow MPV. Because of this, you can have multiple IRLs. So, for non-conventional cash flow, we should not use an uh, IRL, we should use MPV. Now the second one is the mutually exclusive project. There's two different types of projects. One is independent, the other is mutually exclusive. The independent projects is the projects that is determined independently, so it doesn't matter whether the other project is accepted or not. However, a lot of projects is not is affected by the acceptance of the other projects since we only can accept the um, 
the part of the the all projective you know projects right so this is called mutually exclusive project we need to get the best one have to rank and the reason is first of all uh, that because IRL um, assumes so the problem IRL is now IRL assumes that you reinvest the cash flow generated at IRLs because IRL is the discount rate the problem here is there's no reason why the company should reinvest this cash flow at IRL this IRL is sort of hypothetical discount rate that makes zero MPV right however for MPV you use R required rate of return usually based on the cost of capital and the risk of the project which is mo a lot more realistic reinvestment rate the firm want to reinvest at least at your cost of capital right so MPV should be used to choose between mutual export project this is because of this reinvestment rate assumption is flowed for IRR now this is a project project A project B you know it generate this cash flow is estimate this cash flow you look at that and if you look at the IRL the project B IRL is greater but if you look at MPB project A is greater we just accept the project A because MPV is better okay simple and if you look at this MPV for file then you basically find the crossover point you know this crossover point is 11.8% and so because your r is 10 percent here this case a is better but if the r is greater than 11.8 percent then b is better the b gets better right so because because of the um because of this you cannot use irl to compare you always just uh, use mpb to compare the reason the size difference is now smaller project free self fund sooner right so like a two hundred dollar project versus two million dollar project you know the higher the opportunity cost the, if the R is higher you the more value of these funds right because the, the the earlier funds more valuable so this kind high discount rate favors small one and about time same thing if the project was uh, like an earlier payback basically more cash flow in earlier stage then also they prefer the higher uh, discount rate since the same reason you know the more value fund up for the earlier projects in terms of present value okay. so again when we have conflict between MPV and IRL because MPV directly measure the value of the firm like an increase in value of the firm it always always just use MPV this is better one this is important especially for IRL you cannot use IRL for non-conventional cash flows because they generate multiple IRLs which are mo all unreliable and also you cannot rank the project using IRL just use MPV to rank it now this is capital budgeting in practice you have to consider all investment criteria when making decisions basically right and MPV and IRL is most commonly used the primary investment criteria this is best one especially MPV is the best one IRL is the complementary one you know that this very good substitute uh, sometimes you cannot use that when the cash flow is non-conventional and when the project is mutually exclusive now payback period is the commonly used the secondary investment criteria still this is also very useful for the small project small business owners all provide very valuable information so next chapter we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna um uh for we're gonna actually learn how to estimate the cash flows too now let's look at that in class problem consider investment cost hundred thousand dollars and it's cash flow twenty five thousand every year for five years. Same cash flow. The required rate of return nine percent. Required payback four years. Now calculate the payback MPV and IRL 
should we accept the project or not you know let's look at it so first of all you know this is kind, kind of the good pro, um, practice that we can we can do so let's go to the calculator sign again again delete everything right now again press cf right let's press cf and you have previous memory so press second and clear work to clear everything now initial cash for a hundred thousand dollars so press hundred thousand dollars and change the sign because the, this is the investment and enter you have c01 cf0 equal to negative hundred thousand right now you have twenty five thousand yeah press the down arrow again right you have c01 twenty five thousand dollars right so twenty five thousand dollars is cash flow one the c01 is twenty five thousand down now this is a little bit different so we just leave frequency always one if the subsequent cash flow is not the same now it actually just uh, has the same cash flow for five years it means that the subsequent five year cash flow is the same as this is your one so we actually put five for frequency one and enter and your frequency one equal to five then you have $25,000 for five years. Pretty good, right? So that's the end of the, uh, the cash flow register. For payback period, it's pretty simple, right? Because uh, you, you invest $100,000, you generate 25 bucks, 25,000 bucks every year. So after four years, you recover 100,000, 100, right? So payback period is four years and we require pay, require payback is four years so it's not bad so you know this is you know quite probably um, the project way they can see but the more important thing is MPV right so let's look at MPV now press MPV and your interest rate is nine so nine enter and down again and CPT then you actually have MPV equals to negative $2758.72 it's negative MPV we know this is not good right we lose values again we verified using IRL so press IRL compute Then your IRL equals to 7.93%, which is less than R9%, again, the rejects. So we have consistent results with MPV because this cash flow is conventional. The sign change only once, and this is not mutually exclusive project, right? This is just only one project independently. So we can use IRL for this case. Again, when is IRL rule unreliable? When the cash flow is non-conventional the sign changing more than once and when you have to rank the project okay so this is the end of the chapter 8